trough from 40 south 170 east to 50 south 175 east, moving east 25 knots. Northerly gales prevail at the area east of trough within 300 miles of trough line. Forecast for areas within 300 miles. The day a modern ferry sailed up the harbour. 20 months in service and still the latest in design, carrying 735 passengers and crew. Now they salvage the pieces to clear the channel. The day a ship waited but no one could help her. Seven hours in the channel, a few yards from shore. And 51 people died while a city watched. closely associated with each other. We ask you too that we may in this togetherness bring peace and friendship here on earth and be always deeply conscious of your promise to be faithful to us in death. Lord, make us aware of the ever-present dangers of the elements around us. Help us to realize that hope and trust in human means is not sufficient. We place ourselves in your hands. Navigation warning 159. Severe tropical depression sent at 50 miles east of North Cape expected to pass close to North Coromandel, Auckland. By noon 10th will be in Hawke's Bay area. Winds expected over 40 knots within 150 miles of centre and higher close to centre with heavy rain. Beacon Hill to Wahine, Beacon Hill to Wahine. With my weather at the moment is Port Southerly, 40 to 50 knots. Southerly, 40 to 50 knots. Visibility is one mile. Uh, the weather at Papatea Tower is gusting up to 60 knots. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 33. Together then, 11 accidents have occurred in and around the harbour, 10 of them near the entrance, 67 people have been lost in these accidents. One each year... The last word in safety and sailing blind, helpless in a storm which shouldn't have been there. They said, what about the compass? They said she was going too fast, they said she was going too slow, out of control for 30 minutes, trapped in the channel in a raging southerly, then thrown on a reef while the city slept. The storm which has been battering Wellington City since early this morning may be the severest ever recorded in the area. Wellington Airport is closed and many of the capital's roads are blocked by floodwater, fallen trees and slips. There's been widespread damage reported in residential areas and many services have been cut. Sections of roofing iron have been torn away in the storm. And in the city, many shop windows have been blown in or broken by flying debris. And here's a special news item just to hand. The inter-island ferry Wahine is reported to have gone aground on Barrett Reef a short time ago. 
Tugs are on their way to help, but the Marine Department believes there is no serious danger. Yes, Roger Senior, the visibility is down to uh, 50 yards. We're unable to see the ship. We intercepted a message from the senior side of Wellington Central a few moments ago to the fact that the ship is now clear of the reef and anchored and is no longer in any danger. Would you clarify this please? And this is so, I see nothing gained by us staying here. Over. Terminus 3091, it appears the ship is now out of danger. You can return to Lower Hutt, over. Yes, right to Lower Hutt, we return immediately, over. The ship is in no immediate danger. Tugs are on their way to assist us into the harbour. The Wahidi is dragging slowly past Point Dawson on both anchors. And she seems to be out of danger. But she's swinging widely. The seas here are feather white. And the wind speed is easily somewhere between 90 and 100 knots. Tell them that I think it's possible that she could be driven onto the eastern shore, especially if those anchor cables snap. Island Ferry Wahine reported aground on Barrett Reef earlier has suffered no serious damage and is in no danger running aground at Point Dorset or Eastbourne. We've been advised that the ship will be staying at anchor to ride out the gale. Meanwhile, the storm continues to inflict heavy damage. Power lines are down in many parts of the city and vital communications have been disrupted. Hard hit are residential areas around the city. Houses have been virtually demolished and their residents evacuated. Some boats in the harbour have sunk at their moorings and others have been torn free and damaged by the heavy seas. They were awestruck and said to one another, who can this be whom even the wind and the sea obey? from end to end, a tug to the rescue which couldn't have towed her, on the verge of capsize but showing no signs of it in seas so fierce she couldn't be abandoned. Plenty of scupper valves that wouldn't drain a flooded vehicle deck, plenty of life jackets that wouldn't fit children, a good insurance risk with a certificate of survey, safe at anchor in Wellington Harbour, waiting for a tow around the corner. standing by right now to tear up the harbour. Now everything's under control now. I couldn't really say sometime this afternoon. The harbour board Tug Tapui is standing by at this moment to tow the Wahine into the harbour. There is no cause for alarm. Everything is under control. The weather is moderating and it's expected the Wahine will be towed to safety at any moment now. Rescue services are advised they can go on standby. Everything is under control. The ship is out of danger and will be towed up the harbour at any moment. It's now half past one and the Wahine has swung round broadside to the wind. It's got a lift of about 30 degrees which appears to increase as time passes. The Wahine is rolling frightfully in the heavy swell in the harbour. It lift increases and then it goes back, but it never reaches perpendicular again. Crafts of every description are heading out and have been heading out for the past quarter hour uh, from Worcester Bay. There have been first life-saving boats from the surf club along here, dinghies, launches, motor boats. Uh, a whole truckload of inflatable life rafts came through 10 minutes ago. They've all gone out to help. The sea is fortunately very calm. The Aramoana is still standing too. It's been moving slowly up and slowly back as the situation demands, waiting to help us pick up any any persons uh, rescued from the Wahine. We don't know of any loss of life as of this moment. The Aramoana is standing behind, behind us, picking up passengers from life rafts and life boats as are several other vessels which have come on the scene. Several small privately owned launches are speeding around, looking for survivors, and the pilot launch is standing in a position to shepherd lifeboats towards the Sea Dune Beach where they can be, where they can come ashore. 
the sea is quite calm. There's only been two reports, and someone has just pointed out that a lifeboat is coming in or a boat carrying people of some description is coming. We've been here no more than 10 minutes, quarter of an hour. When we were coming down the Wertha Bay Hill, it seemed we could just see through the mist and haze, the Wahili settling. It appeared to be settling on the bottom. It's right over from where we're standing, about a mile off the pinnacle, as I believe they call the rocks jutting out here at Wertha Bay very starkly, jet black rocks. And then by the time we got to the bottom of the hill, no more than two minutes had passed, the Wahini had lifted suddenly to one side. We still don't know if it has capsized and then came back up with one side above the waterline at least. I've had a talk with one of the persons on board and one of the stewards who were on board the Wahini, and he said it was the most orderly uh, evacuation of the ship. He could not tell us where the captain was or how many passengers got off. One fact remains, only half of the lifeboats on the Wahini were actually lowered before the ship lifted. As soon as they stepped ashore, all of them were carried uh, to waiting ambulances and waiting uh, Wellington buses, Wellington City Transport buses, and most of them are suffering from pretty severe exposure. Evidently it's freezing cold out in the middle of the harbour. There's a wind blowing that you can't the living. For all of the relatives of the victims, that God may grant them comfort and peace. For those who dedicate themselves to the service of their neighbours. We would pray to and honour the many people, many of them who performed heroic deeds in the Sipric, many of you here among them. Now look, there are a few questions I'd like to ask. About the weather forecast, what difference is there in practical terms between a cyclone, a typhoon and a hurricane? And this practice of entering the harbour irrespective of weather conditions, shouldn't that be reviewed? And on the compass, surely north is always north. What about the immediate action procedures? I'm thinking particularly of the Island Bay fishing fleet. Couldn't something have been done to save all those people washed ashore in Pencaro. And then there are the tonnage regulations responsible for useless scuppers in the tonnage hatch. How far did they contribute to the capsize? And then the question of the vehicle deck generally. I mean, surely you could have asked what would happen with all that water? Would you like to say something generally about life jackets and lifeboat drill? And then there's the practice of entering the harbour without manning the forecastle head. Since the events of 1968, a number of procedures relating to the safety of shipping in New Zealand waters have been modified. 